What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Curfew Boys podcast. Myself, Sammy, with Mr. No Longer in Florida, Anthony. You had to introduce me that way. I, I, just, I really just, just just say that I'm not in Florida. Like, fuck. Well, man, because to... last time we spoke, you were Mr. Florida, man, for like a good a good chunk of the year, it seems. <laughs> and now you're back home. Why? We still don't know. I'm sure okay. you probably still don't know why you're no, back no, home. It's... It's coming. It's coming sooner. Uh, hey, so we'll, we'll... the warmer weather's coming. You mean? Yeah, a bit of both, but maybe uh, an official Florida move. I don't know. You never know. Life. We'll, we'll see what the cards, how the cards play out, right? But it's, uh, that's I'm done. You, you don't. You don't know. You, you never know what life uh, throws your way. When life, when life gives you lemons, you. I don't know. I don't know the rest What's of that, that, that phrase. When when life gives you lemons, and then it's just Leonardo DiCaprio. On the fucking in 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 his in his Lamborghini from uh, Wolf of Wall Street. That's, yeah. that's the only image I have. Excellent movie, fucking amazing scene. But uh, but yeah, welcome back, Anthony. Um, hope uh, you had a good time. I'm sure you and the family no, had, a, had, a had a fantastic time. Uh, didn't want to come back home, but the positive because you got to look at positive in life. Mm-hmm. I came down, landed in Montreal, and I saw no snow on the floor, and that just made me really happy. Snow seems to be gone, man. It's, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm okay. I, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. The only disappointment I had about this winter, and it's been the story of maybe the past three winters, I barely had or barely had any opportunity or never had an opportunity to go play outdoor hockey. Well, that's been, you know, my 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 neighbor, well, not my neighbor, well, a friend of mine who lives down the street, uh, has been trying to build an ice rink in his backyard mm-hmm. for two yeah. years now. And yeah. Just I mean, I'm weather. not complaining. Yeah. I mean, we only had two snowfalls this year. Yeah, and it yeah. hasn't been cold, so I'm not complaining about that. But looking at the negative side of us being hockey fans and hockey players, mm-hmm. it did suck that we couldn't play outdoors this well, year or last year. I I think the last time I played ODR was when we all got together at the the rink next to your your place, and that was like three and winters that, ago. It was like three winters. I remember that night being cold, but it was like, but it was still fun. And it's it's man like. Uh, not to open that can of worms, but I'm 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 kind of worried about like where where the the world is going and like how us as Canadians are we lose at least here in Canadians at least here in Montreal I can't speak for Western Canada, but at least here in in the East at least I don't know where I I'm 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 worried that you know maybe a, my future generation my kids won't be able to I, I don't know. I'm, I know I'm going way too far ahead, but it just, <laughs> it's just because I I, uh, I used to lo- I love doing it. I think we all love doing it as Canadians, but fuck, just not being able to do it this this winter kind of a bit of a crappy feeling. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain about the cold though. Like nobody likes the cold. Yeah, for sure. So we'll go that. Listen, before we begin, uh, a reminder to uh, all our viewers and listeners that this episode is sponsored by Quick Feet. QuickFeed offers the simplest, most effective way to customize your skates, ensuring you're perfectly positioned for every pivot and turn. When making plays, you can simply slide one, two, or three of these QuickFeed insoles, and you know it'll give you more power and stability on the ice. You know whether whether you're playing at a competitive level, the highest level you could possibly play at, or if you're just skating for fun, or if you get a chance to play ODR elsewhere outside of Quebec. <laughs> Uh, Quick Feet will provide the ultimate enhancement for anyone looking to maximize their performance. Head over to quickfeet.com. That's Q U U I K feet.com. That's Q two U's I K feet.com and unlock a 10% discount with the promo code Curfew Boys 10, all caps, Curfew Boys 10, Curfew Boys 10. Skate into a new era of an on ice performance. Elevate your game with Quick Feet where every strike counts. Anthony. Yours is here. I have it, and I yes, can guarantee. I can't wait to use them. I can guarantee you, being the coach of your son's hockey team, when you put these on, you will be the next up and coming Scotty Bowman, and the kids will be imp- <laughs> the kids will be impressed by your skating. No, but I, 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 all jokes aside, th- it's this actually f- works very well. Like, uh, um, you weren't on last episode when I was explaining to Adrian and uh, and and Joey, but what I what I had played like i really felt the difference in my skating uh very 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 quick and easy to uh pun intended quick and easy to get used <laughs> to like it you you actually feel a difference in within your strides and within your push 
and uh, it doesn't take long to to get used to it. So uh, I'm looking uh, forward to trying them. I know you have my absolutely. pair waiting for yep. me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have three more practices left before the season ends, and okay. then we might have like a parent versus kids game night. Uh, mm. on the ice, so I should be on the ice four more times before the season ends. So uh, make sure you get so it. I'm in looking time. forward to trying them out, and uh, awesome. you'll get my review on probably the next episode <laughs> or two. So that sounds good. So look, at let's 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 get right into it. Uh, last episode, which was episode 200, actually. Damn. Uh, and right now we're hitting episode 201. That's crazy to think when you think when we look back how this all started. But episode 201. Look, last episode, myself, Joey, and Adri, we obviously recorded an episode the night of trade deadline. I know before that, you selfishly ex uh, expressed how you didn't want a player like David Savard to get traded. And I think the general consensus amongst Habs fans is, you know, we all love what David Savard brings to the team, what he brings in terms of a, a leader to, to the young, to the young players, especially the young defensemen. And you want to keep him for one more year for the rest of his contract. And, you know, there were some that say we could get, we, he's got value. We all know the type of defenseman he could be during the playoffs for a team that needs him to just be the number six penalty killer. And obviously things didn't turn out that way. He's staying with the team. And I think I have to admit to you as well that it's a good move because the more and more we watch this guy, I mean, he does the same thing every game, but I think we realize it now more than ever, the fact that he is staying, even after he said, I want to, I want to stay, I want to stay with this team. I want to stay with this rebuild, with this core. It, you you see like what like you actually know us that my god like if if in the near future if the young defensemen of this team get better like we hope and they project are a lot of it has to do with this because of david savard being in the locker room and in the lineup 100 percent. and i know i expressed that i wanted to keep him and i'm happy he stayed but the only Negative thing I have to say about that, it, what worries me, and this is a perfect example of what happened on trade deadline, is the whole Allen situation. Mm -hmm. Now, I told you guys, and we all said it, uh, but I had, last season of the Curfew Boys and last season of the Habs, we had said that Allen should get traded in the off season because he had a lot of value from what he showed mm -hmm. last season. And then they waited too long. And with the three goalie rotation this season, and didn't give him enough ice time. And the ice time that he had was pretty shit. His numbers were not that great this year. Yeah. And we got rid of him, which I'm glad he's gone because we don't need this three goalie rotation and we need to focus on the rebuild and finding a new number one goalie and a good backup goalie, which I'll get into that after when we talk yeah, about yeah. Primo. Yeah. But speaking of Allen, we got rid of him for nothing. We did not get what we could have gotten, I believe, Last season, I'm not saying we deserve a superstar for him, but we could have got a first round or a bit more assets than what we got rid of for this season. And that being said, it's because we waited too long and his value diminished because not enough ice time this year. The ice time that was given to him were not good numbers that he was showing. And again, value just depreciated. Yeah. Savard now. So back to Savard now, what worries me is if we do that same mistake. Because right now, this season, as much as I love Savard and I'm happy he's here and he's going to give the experience uh, to the young team, the youngsters that we have, especially you know our defensive core right now and our and our you know our our, our depth in, in defense is, is insane mm -hmm. coming up, and yeah. you need a guy like Savard to 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 keep these guys to grow and gain that experience. So I'll be happy keeping him if he stays the rest of the season, which of course, and the whole other season next year to give mm -hmm. that experience to potentially late Hudson and everybody else. Yeah. But if he leaves this summer, then I'll be pissed because what was the point of keeping him for the last 22 games? You know what I'm saying? And if he leaves in the summer and we get no assets out of him, we could have gotten good assets this trade done and because his value was fucking high. I, 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 I don't, I don't see him getting traded at, let's say the draft, for example, or any time during the off season. But wait, hold on. I, he's, he he's has got one, one more season. Yeah, yeah, he's got one year left on his contract. Ah, yeah, I understood he was. So, gone so listen, season. actually, I mean, scratch everything I just said. Sorry. 
Well, no, but no, but like I, yeah, I, I, I get, I do get what you're saying because what if, what if next season he doesn't have as good as this? It, it, it could happen. What if next season he's not as, um. I mean, I, I mean, it's not that he's going to get any better. Like he is who he is. He's at that age now where like he, this is who he is. Like, and if he does spiral downwards because of injury or, or what have you, just because he's a year older, you know, the game maybe he's getting a lot faster for him. Then will his value diminish? Like instead of being able to get a first round this year, will we be able to get maybe a third or fourth? So that part I get. I just personally don't think he's going. I don't think he's going anywhere. How he plays next year might determine whether he gets traded at the deadline because it'll be his final year of his contract. I personally think he didn't go anywhere this trade deadline that just passed because he still has a year left. And I personally need- think so. And they needed to retain Jake Allen Jake Allen's contract to 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 the to the maximum. So the maximum is three contracts. We already have two with Jake Allen is now three. And I know, I know you and I, I, I still think the return is to me is better than what I ever thought we could get for him. I thought we were going to get either a fourth round pick or maybe a minor league player, but we got a third conditional and, you know, he's got to play 40 games next year and they got New Jersey has to make the playoffs. And if New Jersey stays healthy next year, if they have a healthy Dougie Hamilton and a healthy Jack Hughes, Luke Hughes is going to get better. Uh, Simon Nemich, second round pick after Uri Slavkovsky. If he gets better, if Jake Allen stays healthy, it could happen. Could he play half the season? That's a big question mark. But them making the playoffs, New Jersey, I personally think if they stay healthy, they might have a chance. And if that becomes a second round pick, that's not so bad. It's not, yeah, not so bad at all. And back to Savard, now, now that I, I misunderstood, I thought it was his last season this year. So having that one more year... You can look at it two ways, okay? So if you know how contract season year l- looks for a lot of players, they yeah. outperform yeah. because they want to get their contract or go to a team, right? So right. that could give us the advantage of keeping him one more year because we might even get more value next trade deadline than this trade deadline. Mm-hmm. That, that's number one. Number two, back to your comment about maybe one more year will depreciate his value because his he's going spiral down. He's not performing. I don't care about that because. Yeah, one more year with him in the in the dressing room is all we need. Because on yeah, the ice, I, I, I agree. It, it's the dressing room situation for me now. Okay, because at the end of the day, we're not winning the cup this year. We're not going to probably win next year. We're not going to be contending next so. year. Okay. Yes, Jory, I'm actually being realistic. <laughs> and uh, but but with all these young defensemen coming up and mm-hmm. our depth, having a Savard in the dressing room, good or not good. I mean, we all know he's good. He's proven it this season. So yeah. that that's done. Like, you know, the ghoulies, uh, you know, are watching this guy play and he's just mm-hmm. a good presence in the dressing room. So next year, the advantage that we might have is, yes, he might have more value at the end of the year because it's his contract year. He might outperform and just tell everybody, I need, I want more money the year after, whatever. But again, even if he declines, it doesn't matter. If he declines on the ice, it doesn't mean that he's declining in the dressing room because it's not all for sure. Oh, going to give value to these young players, especially the young yeah. players that are coming up next oh, year. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, you have, you, I mean, Logan Mayu is going to for sure fight for a spot. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he he's playing well. He got a he got another point tonight, and Laval Laval just won right now, like as we're speaking, and the Toronto Marlies won. So Laval actually holds the last spot in the in their division, the last playoff spot. So. They have to maintain that. But all that says is, yeah, if if he's there for a kid like Logan Mayu, even if Mayu could take some tips from him during the preseason, David Reinbacker, too. Now he's he's a, a couple of days away from coming because of the whole um the whole uh the standings of the teams in the Swiss League, like uh, like uh, the team uh, I'm gonna mispronounce the name, Olton lost. So Reinbacker's team doesn't have to do a play-in series. To see who who gets relegated down to uh, to a, a tier below, blah 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 blah. All that to say is, Reinbacker is coming to North America within the next week or so. But there's going to be him next year, Lane Hudson, like you mentioned as well. He's going to sign a contract at the end of his college season. Absolutely, it, uh, one of these kids is going to try to crack the lineup. Absolutely, I I could foresee maybe one of them 
almost maybe maybe making the Canadians, if not, get called up. Having yeah. a guy like Savard there to kind of guide it's, them the, the same way he's been guiding Kate and Gooley, same way he's been guiding Arbor Jack guy. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And I'm going to say something about uh, in the in the topic of you just said, Gooley, you know, you can already, t- and I, I'm not saying it's coming from Savard, but there's not many players made like Savard anymore, this generation of hockey. Mm-hmm. You know, like those, 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 those defensemen that, that are not scared of the puck, who oh are God. who love to block, who are yeah. just you know like like the Scott Stevens back then, and the guys who were not afraid to get hurt or get yeah, that Josh, puck. Remember get, Josh Georges? He was a Josh shot blocking machine. Georges. Yeah. And exactly, so like Savard is is like at the end of that era of those kind of players. So all these new defensemen, you don't see that anymore. You still see it. Don't I'm not saying it's mm-hmm. out of the game, but it's not as present like we used to see it. But and we'll get into the game of Boston because I want to talk talk about Columbus. But just yeah. a quick, from what I noticed in the the, um, the Boston game because I was there yesterday, I kept an eye on Gooley pretty much all game because he mm-hmm. stood out. Okay, he was blocking shots. He Dude. was doing a lot of stuff, and I think that's coming from Savard. Oh, a because, thousand percent. I've know? said it. I've said it before. Like Caden Gooley's almost modeling his game a little He's, bit. Yeah, off of Savard because. They were they were paired in in Gouli's rookie season was paired with him, but he's still you watch even though they're not paired now, but like you watch a veteran like him do that, of course that's going to inspire you to yeah, you know play the same way anymore as much. And now you're yeah. you know just like I said before, Savard is, is at the end of those kind of players, and you want to bring that back because that's what you need that gritty. Yeah, person he's, he's in, in the that, that he he he's a pure defensive defenseman. Like he's and like from a bit of the the the, the, the old school era, like the, yeah. the, the twenty, like in twenty the twenty ten era. And you want to bring like that back? And I think, like I said, I think having well, you need that room with his young kids. You, I'm already seeing it in Gooley. Imagine Mayu and fucking Nate Hudson. I mean, seeing that on your team, you know, if you're growing with a young team and everybody's playing the same way because the new generation is, you know what I mean? Like they're just not that type of style of hockey. They're just more talented than being that blocker it's a lot having of skill. Yeah. yeah it's more skill than being that you know that wall you know yeah like yeah. sheldon surrey and those guys you know so <laughs> I, I think having savard one more year with all these young players coming is just going to change it, it again having a ghoulie or a mayor or hudson watching that it'll spark it'll, you, it'll spark yeah. that to come back it'll spark the fire in them to really like it's like wow like Seeing again, seeing our veteran do that, like it'll spark the flame in them, the fire in them to really perform to the best of their capabilities. And it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be shut down defense, defensemen, or defensive defensemen, and block shots. Oh. But it's just it 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 gets the bench fired up. Mm-hmm. And let's let's look back to the game against. I want to say I I, I want to say it was against the Buffalo Sabers. We're on the penalty kill. He 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 blocked like a good two three shots, blocked a shot with his skate, lost his blade, so was stuck on one foot again. It seems to be the thing now. It happened against Columbus uh, a couple of nights ago. Blocked another shot while while he was on one foot. You know, laid down like sprawled down, kind of like Hal Gill style to block a shot. That when the puck was cleared, you know, like everybody just kind of like forgot about the the other team going get the puck, and they all went and pushed Savard back to the bench. And you just see, you just see everybody was high fiving him, tapping on the head. Arbor Jacki like was praising him, and Arbor Jacki is profiting from playing with a guy like Savard. It's, it's because of Savard. I'm, I'm not gonna say it's entirely because of Savard that Arbor Jacki is playing a lot better. Arbor Jacki put in the work, but when you learn from a guy like that, when you have a guy like that that you paired up with, like he, it, it, he, he, he'll make you better. So. I, absolutely, I I really think he could be a mentor one more year to 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 the up and coming uh, younger yep. defenseman. It's it's exciting to see. I dude, I personally think I don't know if I don't know if the Canadians give out an unsung hero award at the end of the season. I know they they do the Molson Cup winner, dude. David Savard this year, I have to like he's the uns, he's like the quiet hero of this team. Like just just does what he has to do, blocks shots, kills penalties. Makes a simple play in in his own zone. He he like 
he deserves a lot of credit, a lot of credit. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't yeah. agree more to that. He's he's the unsung hero this year. He's that guy. He's the spotlight this year. And mm -hmm. it's crazy how two seasons ago we said that he was a Jeez. political a, a, a political <laughs> move, uh, trading for a bag of pucks. And now we're praising this guy. And this episode, yeah. I mean, we spoke about it two episodes ago when I was there and said how how things have changed. And now we're saying that he's the uh, give him an award for the unsung hero of the year like it it's crazy it's crazy how time has changed but hey that's you know we got to get credit where it's due that being said i wanted to bring up one thing since we're in this topic and then we'll get into the games but mm -hmm. speaking of ghouli and jack I, and us having the crazy depth in the defensive sides and potentially we're i mean we, we can't keep all these defensemen like we don't have no. space for everybody and we have a lot which is a good and bad thing the good is because now we have a lot of assets to get rid of and and get some good returns, right? Because mm -hmm. we are lacking forwards. We're lacking that 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 power forward, that talented skill player like we all been wanting. Mm -hmm. um, not saying we don't have, but we don't have enough. Yeah, but another um, another another, 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 top, another one top more six. step forward, yeah. right? Yeah. Another top yeah. six. But now with this crazy depth that we have, what worries me is that we're gonna have to get rid of to gain that star mm -hmm. power forward. Now, who do you get rid of? It's going to be a tossing game because if you want that star forward and that power forward, it's all GMs are not going to flip a coin and say, I want uh, a guy in, you know, like in the, in the, in the in, minors. In Laval. They're going to yeah. want a job. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Right. Of course. And then what worries me if that happens is like, are we making the right decision? Right. Because we don't want to, it, and, and I don't think it'll happen if that comes around because we have the right management for it. Because let's go back in time when we traded fucking uh, McDonough for Gomez and then look what happened to that, right? Gomez scored mm. one goal in seven seasons or <laughs> what, was it seven million for one goal? Or yeah, there was, that, a, there, was they, a, we, there was a tracker up, online. Yeah, we ended up taking his New York contract of like seven million. And that one, one like, like that one season, he only scored one goal. Like, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was one, uh, how many? Uh, how much money he was making per goal? And it was one goal, seven million. It was like an actual yeah, website. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I mean, the first year he came to the Canadians was was his best year. Him, Gianta, Camilleri. But then after that, it just went. Then down. it went down. So that so so I'm yeah. just worried that. But if that happens again, uh, like you get rid of a star defenseman to get that star forward, and then if the star forward doesn't work out. Yeah, but the difference is McDonough never played a single game for the Canadians. We so we we see who we or we have been seeing so far, like who I mean, I'm gonna throw out these names who Jordan Harris Harris is. We see who Jaden Strubel is, and we see who Arbor Jacki is. Now, out of those three, I, I think Arbor Jacki is untouchable. Even though there's rumors that there's been multiple offers for him, uh, untouchable, and, but the highest value out of the three. I I think so too, and but I also think that's why Kent Hughes is not this is why he refused offers for him because I think he knows that when this team is ready to make the playoffs, they're gonna need a defenseman like him. A defenseman like Arbor Jacka is a defenseman you they all want. Yeah, and I don't. It has nothing to do with him being able to score or take the hardest slap shot. It's about him just playing that because. Playoff hockey is rough. Playoff hockey is, in a sense, it's it's it can, it can be dirty in the sense, not cheap shot dirty, but it's it's painful. Playoff hockey is painful. You want guys that administer pain, and Arbor Jack guy is that defenseman. Caden Gouley could be that defenseman too, but at least right now, Arbor Jack guy is that defenseman. Jaden Schrubel might actually be that defenseman too. Jaden Schrubel could hit. In my point of view. To me, it's Jordan Harris that's the odd man out. And again, well, Jordan Harris has, mm -hmm. you know, 17 games. And they spoke about this on 690 mm -hmm. when I was on the way to the game yesterday. Is that the one player that needs to stand out for the last 17 games if he wants to get traded for that top defenseman next year, uh, forward next year, if Fuse wants to do anything, is 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 Jordan Harris because mm -hmm. he's he's shown who what he's capable of doing now it depends on the rotation that they have yeah, with that's another with, thing too with white it was, it was white yeah white and uh who else well Colin White's a forward but uh yeah, but there was there it is but there was a who's who's rotating now Harris well, and Trubel with Harris Trubel and uh Jonathan Kovacevic 
that's it. Sorry, yeah. I don't know why I said white, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, Harris needs to stand out for the next 17 games if they want to add more value to this guy at you know July 1st or whatever. But I'm just saying we have so much depth and so much good players, and I wish we can keep them all, but we can't. And I no, just hope exactly. when the time comes, you know, we choose right. Or, I mean, at the end of the day, you might get rid of a strong player, but get a strong player in return that balances yeah, well, out. And you have that's to. what I'm hoping for, you know, like, because I love yeah. Bully and I know you do yeah. too. Like, you oh, look, absolutely. You yeah. Won, and like, yeah. You've been like a advocate for this guy from, from, from before. So, and then again, I watched, I really paid attention to him yesterday's game and He's just he's an he's just you need a guy like that in our team. He's a, right? he's, a mach, he's a machine too, Caden Gooley. And imagine Lane Hudson really and you if they give their potential. Imagine having those three fucking we we could have the best defensive core. Like when they all reach their prime, we can have we, we, we could have the best team. one in the league. We 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 definitely could, and that's what's exciting. It's just the real question is who? It's like who's who's the one that has to go? Who's gonna who are we gonna have to sacrifice? And I think I think it could worry Habs fans a little bit because, and again, like you said, we 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 get so emotionally attached to these kids, and they're all good kids. Like Jordan Harris is a great kid off the ice. Just him as a person. The, everybody out there cannot say enough good things about this kid. No, and you know, but if if Kent Hughes does decide to trade him, like there's personal ties. Like he's known Jordan Harris since he was like. God knows, like at the, at the age of like ten or twelve. See, but I have more so, of an emotional that, that, attachment that, that, to the Jack guys and uh, Ghoulies dude. than Harris. Like, if Harris goes and we get something in return, hot, like a good return, I, I'd be okay with it. You know, but the yeah, I, 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 I agree. agree I agree, but I'm just saying, like, if and this is all hypothetical. Can you imagine if Can't Use is thinking the same thing? Jordan Harris, I he's the one that has to go. But like, how the fuck do you trade a kid that you practically? Not raised, but you watched grow up to become the pro hockey player that he is now. Like that, that's probably going to be a, a tough call down the line. But at the end of the day, who knows? It could be, it could be somebody unexpected. It could be somebody that hasn't come from Europe yet. It, it, it's uh, like it could be. I don't know. I'm just throwing a name out like that. But what if it's like Adam Engstrom, who we're all excited to see eventually? What if it is? What the fuck if it is David Reinbacker all of a sudden? It's like, listen, I could give you a potential top two defenseman, but give me what if what if it is David Reinbacker? I'm not suggesting that they should, but what if it's him? You know what I mean? Like it that's true. You never fuck you never know. What if what if can't use hears that listen? There's a player, a young player that just it's just not working out with our club, but he's got potential to be top six, maybe even top line player somewhere else. What if Kent Hughes does offer David Reinbacker? But hold on, you, so, you never, you never know. I'm not suggesting. Wait. I'm not. I'm really not suggesting that he do that. Think about it. Think about it, Sam. We were right. all shocked mm -hmm. for that draft when we were yeah. pick number three or no number five. five. Sorry, number yeah, five. yeah, yeah, yeah. We were the fifth pick. There was top offensive powerhouses available. Okay, and we're lacking yeah. that. And he went to go choose Reinbacker when you already had. A fucking shit little defenseman in your team. Yeah. And well, he picked him because we didn't have much on the right side. That's fair, fair, but think about it. Yeah. We were all shocked. All fans were shocked. You see what you have on, on your roster, and like, but you're missing a, a, a power forward. Why'd you go here? This is a good example. Like, you I you might be onto something. Maybe he's that we went for him to use him as I uh, could be, uh, you know, a target for a, 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 a power forward, even. Hotter than who was available, like Cooley, um, not Cooley, uh, who uh, was available that, uh, that Mish, yeah. Mishkov, 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 was available. Mishkov, but also yeah. there was even uh, who was also available that we didn't take that we had a chance to get on the who was number number six? Uh, uh, well, number six, uh, well, uh, Philly took Mishkov, Mishkov, but there was someone else, Fuck, was yeah. I, I, hold, I don't know, hold on a sec, I don't know if it was uh, Gay Perot. Who uh, I'm trying to remember. Hold on, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get it. But but anyways, but that, but, that, but but at the same time, look, I, I they obviously didn't draft David Reinbacker thinking that we could use this asset one day to trade for a top forward. I really don't think they went with that approach. But having said that, they 
yeah, look, my God, we, we could have drafted. I'm looking at there's um, Arizona picked uh, Dimitri Shermashev, which is another defenseman. Mishkov with the Flyers at seven. Ryan Leonard with Washington at eight. Yeah, so there you go. Then there was Dalibor Dvorsky with, with St. Louis at 10. Um, Zach Benson with Buffalo. Braden Yeager with, with Pittsburgh. Yeager still got uh, on defense. The other one, Axel Sandin Pelica. He's he's good. Um, we're in the gay parole, 23 with New York. Like, I, I mean, I still like the David Reinbacker pick before anybody thinks, suggests that I should, that they should trade him. But if you want value in return, you have to trade value. Of I'm course, saying you, you, you have to. Well, we all know you have, you have, you have to pay high to get high. So I, I, I'm just you. I mean, and you never know. You never freaking know. I'm I'm excited to see David Reinbacker with Laval or Montreal. I really, really am. Don't get me wrong when I say that. It's it's I'm just but but also like it could. If we want that top player, if it's going to happen through trade, you might have to you might have to trade your top another top prospect and if Ryan Backer's that player and again depends for who I'm 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 just I'm just throwing a shit idea out there but I I I I, I they have to go with a forward this coming draft though if they go with oh, another defenseman as much as I love that Zane Perek kid oh I'm telling you man here I'll throw th oh my god I'll throw out another fucking I'll throw a curveball out to every, everybody out there, but what if the Canadians trade David Reinbacker for a top forward, get that top forward, and draft Zane Perek, who's a right-handed shot with the Canadians' top pick at the draft? That'd be beautiful. I'm just saying. I'm, 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 but I'm, knowing, I'm, knowing, I'm, knowing I'm Gordon wishing, and Hughes, I'm Gordon not wishing for, I'm really not wishing for that to happen, but if it does, it depends who that is. Again, this is all hypothetical. It depends who the return is for Reinbacker, but if he's a top forward that everybody loves and knows has potential, and then you draft Zane Perek on fucking on 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 the on draft day. I know this is this isn't NHL 25 on PlayStation or Xbox. But hey, Joey, <laughs> Joey, Joey, if you're listening at this point, I was very realistic this whole episode. Now you have. I I totally Sammy went becoming a fucking NHL 2020. I totally season. went. I totally went with the Sammy scenario right there, man. Like a thousand percent, I went there. But uh, here, let's 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 digress a little bit. You also, I think, at one point during the season, said if the Canadians get rid of Caden Primo, that would be a big mistake. Yes. So I only said that after we saw the potential in him because he this mm -hmm. season. I don't know what happened. You know, we've been all of us, especially you. Know, you do, you, do you know you. what happened? Do you know what happened? He's been seeing a. Um, I don't want to say I, I. I don't think the term, the right term, is a sports psychologist, but he's been seeing like a, for lack of a better term, like a a, a mental prep coach. Okay, but uh, okay, lately a lot of athletes are doing this. I know I'm going yeah. way off topic here, no, but I've been are. watching. Uh, Yoel, Yoel are me. Yoel Armia, too, man, has been doing that. Then look how much better he's been playing. So I've been watching Full Swing, too. It's a golf Netflix special. It's like the Formula One. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And a lot of these, you know, golfers are doing it. Like, a lot of mm -hmm. golfers who just went off the map started mm -hmm. seeing psychologists, sports okay. psychologists, and now, mm -hmm. like, you know, I forgot his name. Um, but anyways, see, fuck, I should have wrote his name. I forgot it. But anyways these 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 sports psychologists and these athlete psychologists like it's helping them come mm -hmm. back to life and mm -hmm. if you're saying i didn't know that Keenan was looking at one but if he is yeah, yeah, look, he was. it's it's actual it's actually working it's crazy but sorry yeah. i went off topic but yeah no no but, but, but no but dude like the thing about Caden and primo is uh, did you remember way back in his first training camp during a preseason game he he made a save, and Price was the backup that night. Carey Price was the backup, and at one point he said he he looks like a younger version of me. Yes, we Do you all remember yeah. that. I remember so, that. So so here here's my thought about Caden Primo, and I, I like to talk about the Columbus game since I was there, and we'll get to <laughs> we'll get to that later for our audience. Our audience needs to hear this story, but. 
I really think Caden Primo this whole time, he had the tools and he still has them. He has the tools of what it takes to be maybe not a star goalie in this league, but at least a consistent, a, 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 a goalie good enough to stay in the NHL consistently. Be as in May, like a Jake Allen, who's had a long career in the NHL. He's not a superstar. He's not the best goalie out there, but he's good enough to stay. He's reliable. Even if he's a backup, he's a good one. Again, maybe Primo could be even better than that somewhere down the line. But it also goes to show that goalies take a lot more time than usual, especially uh, for a goalie like Kenny Primo, who I, I'm pretty sure was drafted in the seventh round. Okay, He's not a Carey Price or an Andre Vasilevsky that are first-round picks. Okay, those guys, they're just different breeds, and that's why they're one of the best to ever play that position. But I really think Caden Primo had all the tools that he needs to be a good goalie. It's It was just... It was a mental thing. He, and he, was, he couldn't figure it out yet, probably. And during the COVID year, when they would put him in net, he would get destroyed like you just saw. You just saw the life go out of him and the confidence. Yeah, also in the shadows of Carey Price and was really hard to like we always said this. I, I mean I said this last season. I, I think Kenny Primo always had it in him. He was just mm -hmm. in the wrong environment. And that's why I said at the beginning of the season, before he shined and whatever, I said, This guy's gonna shine somewhere else. Mm -hmm. He has the tools, like you said, he has the talent. He it's just he needs to go somewhere else. He needs to get out of that dressing room. He needs to go yeah, somewhere else. I, I, I remember when you said that. Yeah, yeah. You know, but something happened. I don't know if it's this year's management, what they're trying to do in like they're building that the different winning culture in the dressing room where I don't know what happened, but something sparked in him. And we're finally showing he's finally showing what we all saw in him. What mm -hmm. we all thought he could be. We all said at the beginning as yes, he was the next Carey Price, which he's not. Okay, <laughs> no, he's not. He's but not. he has a talent, and he just never showed it. And now finally he is. That being said, I am very happy that we got rid of Allen and kept him, because I think it would have been a big mistake. Mm -hmm. Though I did say him leaving, but I've always said him leaving would be a better player somewhere else with a different coach, different team, different environment. But now that he found himself here. Yeah. It's a fucking steal for us because, and I wouldn't be surprised, and I'm throwing this out there, okay, that right now there's going to be the, and having this two goalie situation, there's going to be a battle between Montevo and Primo of who wants to be number one. We all know Montevo is our number one goalie, right? Yeah, right now. But yeah. now that yeah. Primo is stepping up his game and they're going to be sharing um, positions, uh, you know, night after night. There might be a fucking co a competition between them two of who wants to be number one because Primo is not gonna. He's, I think Primo found himself and he doesn't believe he's a, a, a second goalie. He wants to prove that he's a number one. Sure, right? I mean, but all all goalies do. Yeah, that's a, especially him that he's young enough. He's only twenty four. He's still young. So and now we have two very good goalies that are gonna compete and add and young goalies and want to get some value in them. And you have Fowler. That's coming Dude. up. Dude. Okay. Hockey, Think about he, it. He, he won. He he was awarded the Hockey East goaltender of the year in his rookie year in college. But look how it's lining up, man. You have mm -hmm. a comfortable who's fucking again. Three years ago, we all said training for a bag of pucks. And now yeah. we're all saying he's our number one. Fucking no, goalie. no, we love him. <laughs> we, we all love him. So now he's our number one. Primo just came out of the fucking nowhere and he's performing and potentially wants to be a number one. Or a very good number two. Mm -hmm. Now you're giving value to two really good young goalies. A third young goalie who's projected to be the next character. Our number, Price, or at least our number one. Or at least our number one is coming into the picture with two fucking good goalies who are fighting to be oh. number one and gaining value. I'm telling you, we're, we're, the stars are aligned for this team to become. I'm saying this out loud. Joey, it's not a fucking scenario <laughs> or whatever. It's not me being a typical Haas fan. I am telling you right now. I'm hoping that I'm still alive for this, but there's we're, we're, th this team is is in the direction of a fucking dynasty. We we will be the <laughs> Pittsburgh Penguins or the Detroit Red Wings Jeez. or the fucking Chicago Blackhawks uh, years back when they w went to the Stanley Cup Finals three four years in a row and won two or three. I'm telling you right now, it's coming. The stars are aligned. I'm sorry, well, I'm going off topic. But well, well no, but well, but but. Think about it. No, I, 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 trust me, I, I've been thinking about it my whole life. 
Caden Primo's got one year left. And then after that, he's a restricted free agent. I'm predicting Jacob Fowler plays one more year in college and that gets his contract. I think next year, and and don't forget, Montembeau signed an extension. He's here for another three years. So when Primo's contract is over, again, if they resign him, sure, for how long? But they after that, they're gonna have to think about signing they're gonna have to sign one or the other, either Fowler or Primo. And then after that, Montembeau is only gonna have uh two years left on his contract. So as much as Montembeau right now is the number one, I, I think it's going to come. To, dude, like, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I don't know. We might have another three goalie tantrum again. It, I'm with, telling with, you now. With Fowler involved, or, or, or I don't know. Like, if, if We're not going to have a three goalie tantrum. We're going to be in a Primo, position Primo, where Primo, we get Primo. rid of. Probably. And... I, I, maybe and we're, we're gonna have a maybe. heart emotional attachment to all three because we all want Fowler, we all so love Montebo there, there, now. There's no way, there's no way they trade Jacob Fowler. No, 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 but what I'm ever. trying to say is that it's it might come, come down, it might come down to between Primo and Montembo. I'm telling you, now, I'm saying this right now in this episode. Next year, it's gonna be the battle of the goalies, and that's it's gonna sad. be it's gonna be the Halak Price situation where they both wanted that number one, and we all knew it was Price, but Halak was performing and Oh yeah, couldn't we take it anymore and wanted to get traded because he wanted to be. They didn't want to be Price's backup. Like no, no one wants to be well, Price's well, backup. Well, after, after you defeat fucking Washington and then Pittsburgh, and yeah, they're 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 putting stop signs with your name on it in the streets of Montreal. Yeah, of course you don't want to be Carey Price's backup. Next year it's gonna be the battle of the goalies, and someone's gonna want that spot, and no one's gonna want number two, and then Fowler's gonna come. And- and listen, I'll add in even I'll add another. What if what if Jakob Dobej all of a sudden is like, listen, the start of Laval season was meh, he looked iffy. You look at him now, he's the number one Laval, and he's he's playing these important games that they need to win in order to get, get a chance to make the playoffs. What if he let next season is like, hey man, he deserves a shot. Yeah. A lot of projections, <laughs> but a lot of a lot of hope here, man. It's crazy. I'm telling you, the stars are aligned. We're gonna have we're gonna well, have a, a good problem coming up. We're gonna have so many good pieces. Problems. We don't even know what the fuck we're gonna do. We're gonna with have them. many good problems. I, I I totally agree. And uh, this is all uh, this is part of management's plan. They're not deviating from the plan. They're sticking to it. Yep. They're not going off road slightly. They're going down that fucking road. They know what they're doing. It's just there's just some fans out there that aren't patient oh, enough. But, but that's it, but that's another that, that's another story. Um, it's typical yeah. Habs and um, not being patient, but if and again, we were all on that boat, all of us. Yeah, you know, we've all been through that. It's just that we snapped out of it and we finally come to realize like shit, it's the real thing now, and we're mm-hmm. doing it right. So I want to be patient now because being patient now, again, I keep saying this, and I, I'm not being you know dreaming flying colors and and PlayStation 25 here. I'm actually speaking from the bottom of my heart. If we do this right, I'm not saying it's going to happen, okay? Please don't stamp mm-hmm. it, Joey, that I'm I'm predicting this. <laughs> I'm saying if the if we play our cards right, this team plays to their potential and the management does the right moves with all the assets we have and the depth we have, we can build that dynasty. We could. We just got to play it right. It all has fans need to be patient because, again, I'm not – gonna shit on those fans that are not patient because we've all been there for mm-hmm. many years but again we've come to the era of the Benjamins, the fucking bob gainies and so they we're, always, not, we're not doing that way anymore we're not doing that way anymore and we're finally doing it smart mm-hmm. so find, like wake up see what's happening look at the bigger picture they look at the bigger look- picture because we have the right people doing it exactly like, you know and they proved it already so like just be patient and this is the time that we should all be patient Okay, this is a story time now. Yeah, Columbus. <laughs> okay, I, I, th- 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 this is probably you. You, you're the one that's probably gonna have to tell the story a little bit because. So Monday. So, <laughs> okay. So I'm in the Habs fan club. Um, I have a like a Habs agent, if you want to say, like I have a contact at the Habs Bell Center, and I'm in a in a fan club type thing, and I get emails every single day pregame. Uh, 
contest, this and that. Is it Club 1909? Are you talking about that? Yeah, one? I'm in the Club 1909. Yeah, okay, yeah. And, uh, shit, sorry. And Club 1909, and I signed up for a con. I, I usually ignore the contest because I'm like, one out of a million, I'm never going to win this shit. But there was a contest I signed up a few months back. I even forgot that I signed up for this contest. And this contest <laughs> was win uh, tickets to sit in the, the, had the press box experience. Put my name in it, whatever. I totally forgot I did this. Monday morning, I get a phone call and I answered it. And I was in Florida and I get this phone call Monday, 8 a.m. I'm like, who is this? I'm like, hello, is Anthony speaking? So, yes, this is uh, blah, blah, blah from the Bell Center, uh, Run Chalk and 1909 fan club. I'm like, yes. She's like, I'm sorry we're calling you last minute, but um, for tomorrow night's game, tomorrow night's game, you won the contest for the press box experience. And I was silent. I was complete. And she's like, hello, are you still there? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, um, you said it was last minute. Is there a chance of me telling you that I won't be able to make it tomorrow and you give me another game? <laughs> she's like, no, I'm sorry. This is for tomorrow night's game. There's a certain amount of tickets for different games and different packages. Blah, blah, blah. She's like, why you can't make it? I'm like, no, I'm in Florida. And I, 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 this is a lifetime experience. I need to go to this game. And she's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, 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 you, no, no, you don't understand. I, I need to go to this game. I want this experience. Can you give me another game? I, I even said, can I speak to your supervisor? <laughs> like, I was so angry. You were negotiating. Holy And then fuck. she's like, look, I'm very sorry, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, took a deep breath. And I'm like, and in my head, I'm like, okay, no, no, we can't get rid of these tickets. This is, I'm not getting rid of these tickets. I need to figure mm -hmm. something else. So I'm like, the curfew boys, like. I need to get this to people that are going to appreciate this fucking, these two tickets. So I told her, I'm like, look, I know I didn't, it's me who won, but can I give it to two friends of mine? She's like, of course. I might call me back at 11 o'clock. I'm going to find someone. Went in the Griffey Boys um, WhatsApp Christ. page. Yeah. And I told you guys about this contest. Everybody thought it was a scam. And <laughs> um, <is> true. <laughs> for a second, I thought it was a scam too, because she did call me private number. Yeah. She said she was going to call me back at 11 o'clock, uh, 11.30, sorry. Mm -hmm. It was 11.40. I didn't get that call. And thank God, because Chris only messaged me at 11.34 saying, hey, yeah, you're still yeah. available. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. yes, it's still available, but she didn't call me back. And then that's when everybody's like, this was a scam. This is bullshit, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> she ends up calling me back at 11.40. Hey, did you find someone? I'm like, uh, yes. Gave Chris his name. It burned me a lot. But I was happy that I gave it to the right people. And now the story is yours. You can continue. Well, Jesus. So I was scheduled to work <laughs> that night. Sorry. And, you know, we all have we all have uh, sick. We all have sick hours that, that are ours or personal days or personal hours that we could take off. And yeah, like since Chris was the only one able to go, but he needed somebody else to go like Joey couldn't go. Zoo couldn't go. Adri couldn't go. It's like okay, no, it's like I I I gotta go to this thing. So I ended up booking off, and some of the, some of the guys were asking me to our to our uh, our viewers out there, like some of the guys I work. I'm telling them like, oh guys, I'm booking off tomorrow. They're like, uh, like oh, is everything okay? I'm like, it's just something unexpected happened, an opportunity. I got an opportunity that I can't miss out, and you know, eventually. I booked off. I got uh, ended up going to the press box with uh, with my cousin Chris the and about your experience. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was uh, it was an awesome experience. Like it was it was actually really cool. You're way high. You're very high up. Um, you know, we saw like so we 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 got it. We got uh, we got a little tour to like uh, uh, um, the lounge area. The club 1909. I don't know if it was the club 1909 or the Le, Le Mise au Jeu lounge, but it's like, you know, it's 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 the press box lounge where you could go, you could get, uh, you could get hot dogs, you could get alcohol, you could get chips and all that. We were then brought to the players' lounge, the alumni players' lounge, and the only the only alumnus we saw were Stefan Quintal and um, and Yvon Lambert. But they were sitting in a corner and, you know, there were other much. And apparently it's like uh, the alumnus can go and and their family members can be there, too. So 
though they were the only two like so they're like ah go, she, the, the the our 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 tour guide lady she was all like uh yeah, yeah go go and walk in chris and i were like we didn't feel right going to the alumnus players lounge and like walking amongst family members all that like we felt like we were stepping on toes so we were really like we we're in that area we were being like a little bit too respectful like we want to respect you know Cantal and lambert like we didn't go up to them we didn't go say hi to them we let them be um but it was still pretty cool. And it wasn't that big, the lounge, surprisingly, but but it was still pretty cool. Then we went. So, yeah, then we went up to the press box area. And we're walking along like, you know, the um, I guess uh, the it's not the not the not the hallway, but like, you know, it's it's basically the balcony section ish before you get to the actual press box. We walk past um, Kirby Doc and Christian Dvorak that are just sitting there like and. And the, there was a big rule. It's like, don't bother the players that are sitting there. Don't bother. Don't bother members of the media. Like they're actually, they're all working. They're all in the zone. So like, like, so like, we're just walking by Kirby Doc, the Varak, and like, like, ah, okay, well, there they are. Go to the press box um, with another couple that was there. And we were in between the TSN 690 press box to our left. And to our right was... This this is Joey's wet dream, like the stats press box, where throughout the game we kept hearing in French, um, 40, 47 shot, 44 block, uh, the, the 21 block. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, when Caulfield shot, Van Dirk, say 22 shot. Uh, like, like they're just guys yelling at each other stats and like what was going on during the play. Block shots, hits, giveaways. Um, oh my god, um, takeaways the, the that's crazy the passing percent, like, yeah. But the thing that impressed me the most is, yeah, you're way high up, but you're a lot more centered and you see details on the ice that even in the stands, as close as you as you are sometimes in the stands, you don't see those details. You see, you really see like the spaces between players. You see how they move and like how they read the play. If they have enough space to get past the player, or if they have to make a buck, you like it's 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 you're it, you're almost you're practically helicopter view, and dr- throughout that entire we, we couldn't scream. We weren't allowed to scream during goals. <laughs> so, all games, so, three so, fucking goals. So shut when, out. Brent, when Brendan Gallagher scores, like not even a minute in, I'm like, yeah, oh, sorry, you know what I mean. So. So like and Chris too, he like he had to like fuck Chris had to calm down because we know how excited he can be. But throughout the whole game, and that was another game where Savard was just fucking he made more saves than than uh, Cade and Primo that night. And even Primo fucking told said it to everybody at the when he was first started the game. He's like, Man, David Savard, he probably blocked more shots than I did. But I realized how like this is this is how scouts scout players. This is the angle they need to see to really identify how well these players can play and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's like watching player highlights on film, it 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 doesn't even come close to the press box angle. So all that to say is what was funny about this experience is that. You know, we obviously post in our Instagram stories and a day or two later, so people still see it. So everyone's like, oh, the heck? oh, my God, look at you guys. You guys are celebrities. Oh, my God. Press box. privilege. So, blah, blah, blah. I'm there. I'm like, yeah, we just won a contest. So, so, <laughs> so like, I'm telling you, they're like, oh, my God, look at you guys. That's so cool. How did you get these tickets? How did you get? We won a contest. We got super lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so I was at a I went for a pickup for the kids this week at the school when I got back and one of the, the parents there that follows our podcast and loves our show by the way and he looks at me he's like you guys made it big time. I'm like what? <laughs> like uh fuck you guys really got up there. I'm like that that's that's crazy. You guys can go to the games now and watch it from there. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, no, no, you you your guys were in the press pros- uh, box this week. I'm like, you guys have a, a spot there now. <laughs> and I was I so wish. I wish like, congratulations, like, congratulations. And I'm like, 
should I bullshit and say yes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should. Thousand you know? percent, you should have. <laughs> so I looked at him and I said the same thing like you. I'm like, well, we won a contest. Uh, yeah, we just got lucky. <laughs> but but yeah, people like just the perception of these posts that you're posting about that experience. People actually thought we made it, but we yeah. didn't yet. But it was still. I can just imagine how great of an experience if, it was for you and Chris. And if it makes you feel any better, I I, I know it's impossible. It won't. But, but you can say whatever you want. But it won't. <laughs> I apply to the. There's one more game. It's March 30th. There's another press box co uh, contest that I applied for on 1909. As soon as I got home, I looked for more contests because I'm a club 1909 member, but I never fucking checked these. I things. never did it Dude, until recently. So I I applied for this contest again, and uh, I I Chris and I we can't thank you enough. First of all, second of all, there they gave us a Kirby Doc bobblehead and a Montreal yeah. Canadiens cap mise I have that saved for you. I will. No. Give, no, 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 no. I, it's, it's. I, I. There's no way I could keep it. Like when I give you your quick feet <laughs> insoles, I will give you, I will give you a Kirby Doc bobblehead and a Montreal Canadiens uh, cap. Um, yeah, we'll talk about offline, but I appreciate it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, to be honest, though, like yes, it, 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 it. I'll say this: it really did yeah. suck when I got that phone call and I couldn't go, but I, I couldn't be happier to, you know. If I would have said, hey, sorry, I can't make it, give it to someone else, it would have, like, a waste, right? Because we have a fucking podcast. We have the yeah, right yeah. people to go to yeah. this. And you guys, especially you and Chris, like, you appreciated it. And that's what, to me, mattered is yeah, giving know, we, someone yeah, who we, appreciate this experience is... Uh, we, we'll, we'll owe you forever. So. <laughs> um, just, but, just All yeah. I want is just... Tell oh, Joy I'm right all the time. And we're good, even. Yeah. yeah. So okay. so so far you've been you've been right about David Savar. You've been right about Caden Primo. So, and you might be right about a a, a a potential trade for a young defenseman for a top six forward. But hmm. the way the way that gate em ended, and I love it. I would definitely use it as a title. Like when Caden Primo said, "It's just the beginning." There's then a lot. Again, of, there's though, a lot of metaphor in this rebuild like now this team it's just the beginning but can i just say oh. something i know we we have a lot of good things to talk about that game you know three nothing mm -hmm. shut mm -hmm. out yeah but it was the worst game of the season halfway like it, shit it was very deceptive because it was, it was, it was you know you, you know you know to... it, they got outshot but it was do you know what it felt like? It felt like look, it, it, they lost against a shittier team. Primo got the shutout. He got he got another shutout against Anaheim, an even shittier team. And as much as the Canadians got outshot, like there was never a sense that oh my god, Columbus is gonna come back. It was it felt like one of those things where give us your worst, it won't work. It like that's what it felt. It really did. Columbus was shooting a lot from the outside. And those those a couple of saves where Primo like had to really make a save like that glove save he made at the first period right, was... like he he looked like Carey Price doing it I'm just saying <laughs> but and then he made a couple of like really good saves after after that the second and third period but like I I don't think there was ever a sense of urgency that oh my god like we need to wake up or else Columbus could beat us it was there was that vibe that like. Columbus could give everything they got, and it's like there was no worry. Like it, 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 it's, it's weird. So, like maybe on paper, yes, it was a, it, like the stats did not go into the Canadians' favor. But I, I, I'm telling you, like maybe this is just my, my perspective of it. But it was like they, Columbus, like they, 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 they didn't have the star power. Like Johnny Goudreau, like poor guy, he's alone. Adam, Adam, uh, uh, not Adam, Zach Wierenski on defense. He was like probably the most noticeable player out there. Poor guys alone. He He's trying to do everything. Nothing was working. So it was just one of those games where it's like, yeah, they got out shot. Maybe Columbus was a lot more in the zone than the Canes were in, in uh, the other way around. But like, it was just, there was no, there was no worry. There was no worry of a comeback. No worry of like, I don't know that uh, it was it was weird. It was definitely a different feeling uh, compared to the the Boston game. Yeah, so I was at the Boston game. It was a good game, but I'm gonna say one thing before we get into the actual game itself. What bothers me, and this is we I spoke about this uh, in the past. We all did 
about how the game is changing and the rivalry is not there anymore. And uh, maybe it's because mm-hmm. of the, the you know, the rules of the fighting and the, the concussions, mm-hmm. all that stuff. But I was a bit disappointed yesterday. Okay. I um, got these tickets an hour before the game. I missed puck drop. Uh, I was actually cutting my hair. I get um, three phone calls. Again, I got a bunch of phone calls. My son was on his on my phone. He comes, uh, Daddy, Daddy, uh, the O'Brien is calling you. I'm like, oh, no, he's probably calling you to wish me welcome back home, whatever. I'm like, just flush the call. Flushes it. Mm-hmm. He calls two more times later. Daddy, Daddy's calling me. Like, just flush it, flush it. Then my wife is calling me. Like, Holy shit. Like, did someone <laughs> die? Like, something's happening. So, I yeah. my hairdresser, like, st- cut, stop. I answer the phone. And he's like, fuck, I have a ticket to the game tonight. Do you want to come? I know it's an hour and, and two hours. I'm like, f- I'm like, I just lost an experience on Monday, not going to a fucking yeah. game. Fuck this, I'm coming. <laughs> Fuck, I, yeah. My hair just didn't finish my beard. I'm like, listen, stop the haircut right now. It's done. <laughs> Good. I'm like, he's like, are you sure? Like, I didn't. Fin-. I'm like, just, just, I'm done. I need to make it to the game. I went home. I finished the beard by myself, and <laughs> I, I just flew to the Bell Center. So, as fly, I, I didn't even know who the Habs were playing. You know, you just wanted to go. I just wanted to go. I just forgot. I find out when I arrive there that it's Boston Bruins. I'm like, fuck, you know, the original mm-hmm. six, the Boston Montreal, like the rivalry. Yeah. And it wasn't what we used to see back mm-hmm. in the day with the Lucic and the Marshall and the, you know, and yeah, that, it's uh, Char- the, the, Chara. The, the Chara, when yeah. the game was gritty and fucking mm-hmm. hits and fights, and even the crowd were fighting against each other. And that, that's so lost in this yeah. generation of hockey and I want it to come back <laughs> so badly. I miss those days. Do you remember Sam back in the day? I do. Facebook, when Facebook was, was hot and yep. every night, all of us, everybody, yeah. all our, everybody at Dawson at school was mm-hmm. after a game, there was statuses. Yeah. Your your you know? buddy, yeah, your your we went to your place, your your parents' place. Now your buddy was there with his Bruins jersey. Yeah, and we yeah, would yeah. go on Facebook, and there was debates, like 180 comments of people fighting, yeah, uh, yeah. insulting each other, <laughs> Bruins fans saying bad things about the Habs. Has now forget it. You don't even see that anymore. And I'm I, I'm okay. We all know social media, <laughs> Facebook is dead, but just to say, it's not there anymore. Mm-hmm. And you even see it on the ice. Like yesterday really disappointed me. Yesterday was very conservative. So mm-hmm. let's go into the game. Like it was a conservative game. Both teams were playing very defensive. Mm-hmm. Um, there were centered ice all game. If you look at the shots, I think it was like 18 to 15 or whatever it was. There wasn't many shots last night. They played yeah. a lot center ice back and yeah. forth. There was no hitting. There was no fighting. And it just really, I, I don't know, I don't know what the league needs to do to bring back that rivalry between teams, between players, between fans. I don't know. I just want that back. It's well, completely lost. Well, we, we could open up the debate about that whole division rivalry going on, like the division format. I, I don't know if the league tried to do it with that. It's just, it's, it's. I think now just the, with the reducing of fighting, I, th- I think that's what it is. I just think that's what it is. I also think Boston doesn't have that. I, I, I think Jim Montgomery brings a whole new winning culture to the Bruins, but it doesn't. I don't know if it I could be wrong. But I don't know if it has that big, bad Bruins feel to it. And it could be it's just they're just not the team built for that right now. They're a completely different team, like without, especially without Patrice Bergeron, uh, no Krejci, but you know, Marshawn's getting older. Just it's Pasternak and Charlie McAvoy's show right now. But I, I don't think Jim Montgomery brings that 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 big bad Bruins vibe. Like Claude Julien brought that. Coaches before him with the Bruins brought that. I don't think Jim Montgomery's bringing that. I think he's bringing more of a. How can I say this? Uh, yeah, just hard work, but like through like holding each other accountable. And like sometimes it doesn't mean like you have to go start fights and all that. Like they don't have. No, no, no. They I, don't I, have. They don't have. the Again, they don't have a Lucic type player. They don't have a, a, a Sean Thornton type but, player. They don't. I, you, you know what I mean? They don't have a Chara but anymore that punishes everybody. They they just don't have that anymore. No. I, and OK, fair. 
a good point to say that for the Bruins, but I, I, I'm maybe I'm even generalizing not only the Bruins, but I think I'm generalizing the whole league. I think <clears throat> the league has become, and and this is an opinion maybe a lot of people not, might not like or whatever. Maybe it's reality and it's the truth. I don't know, but this is how I vision it right now. I, how I see it from my perspective, and you see it with the All Star Game. Mm-hmm. I be I think this league became very entertainment. Mm-hmm. It's all about skill and talent, which is not a bad thing, right? We love to see the Jack the, the Jack Hughes with these fucking plays of um, the McDavid's going through the whole team and scoring goals. The I think the league is coming is, is opening up that world of we want to see skill on the yeah, ice. Yeah, of course. They want they uh, yeah, a, a thousand percent, but that's but what... that which is not a bad thing, but it took away the passion and the gritty I want to I want to win. Now well, it's like no, it, scored it's, the it's, nicest goals. It's all, it's all there. It's just it's there's there's no like it's it's it, it, it that's what it is. It's it's it is all skill. The passion's still there, and and the guy these guys still want to win. It's just now it's just it's a different breed of players. They're 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 a lot more faster and a lot more skilled. And you know, like back in the two thousands, even before that, it was. It was rare to to find a skilled player. If your name was Cindy Crosby or, or Ovechkin, you were the rare, you were the that that rare fucking elite franchise player. Now you could get you, but that that only came in the first overall. Then you, yeah, there was Evgeny Malkin. Then there was Eric Stahl at the time too. But like it was, you got Patrick Kane out of that. You got Steven Stamkos. Now you're getting elite talent in second round picks, third round picks, even sometimes fourth round picks, and they're no. coming at a consistent rate. It's just a matter of these teams having to find those players. But other than that, it was you, you built guys through like guys that were big, tough, didn't score goals, but man, they would hit you and punish you and all that. Like they're still obviously they're still hitting, but guys are so fast now that they they avoid those hits. It's 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 yeah it's, the, the it's, game especially the game the game has changed. It's the game has gotten so fast that it's so hard to align yourself with a player down the middle and give him a clean center ice hit. It's because guys are being, are able to dodge these players so quickly now. And back to, back to the, the lack of rivalry feel between Montreal Boston. It's because we haven't faced them in the playoffs in a long time. Now. I think that part has a play too, because it's from, from 2002 up until the last time we faced the Bruins in the playoffs, like we were facing them every fucking playoffs practically. Yeah. Every time we got into the playoffs by the skin of our teeth, first round, what was it all? It was always Montreal, Boston, Montreal, Boston, Montreal, Montreal Boston. Boston, or okay, second round, Montreal, Boston, Montreal, Boston. Yeah. So that kept the rivalry alive, but we haven't had that type of playoffs in a while. We haven't made the playoffs in a while. <laughs> and but let, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Listen, can you imagine after we beat the Leafs? Let's say if we let's say when we beat the Leafs, after that we kept going to the playoffs and we kept facing the Leafs in the first round all the time. Whether right, we win or lose, right. that rivalry would have been reborn from a fucking century ago. I, I'm exaggerating a century yeah. ago because lately it's just been Montreal, Boston. But if Montreal were to face Toronto every time in the playoffs, let's say once the Canadians are ready to make the playoffs and Toronto stole the team. There. Anyways, all that's mm-hmm. like that rivalry is going to be reborn. But if it goes, but if again, if it's always Montreal, Boston, that rivalry is going to be reborn again. They, they could come up with a new rivalry. Imagine they face Ottawa every one, uh, like every other playoff round in this, in this division, yeah. because that's how the division is built. So, you know, those rivalries between Pittsburgh and Philly, why they were always facing each other in the playoffs. Rivalry between Pittsburgh and Washington, Crosby versus Ovechkin. Why? They were always facing each other in the playoffs. So the playoffs has a lot to do with it. And I think the league really tried to spark that again. It's just you can ask oh, Joey. Wait. We we oh, spoke about out. this division. This division setup is it's it's not working. It's it really it really isn't. Before but, be, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Say your, go 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 ahead. No, I, before I, before we continue that conversation, I want to go back to the actual game because I want to talk yeah, yeah, about yeah. it. Paul, we got we got a major a major turning point in the game that we have to talk about. That I don't know if it's what I'm about to say, but it's definitely it's it's, it's the, the 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 last play of the game. Actually, <laughs> okay, I'm not talking about that. But to me, okay. what's so 
it was, uh, again, a very conservative type game. Uh, both teams were playing very cautiously for some odd reason. And, you know, Jordan Harris had an interview before the game. I was listening to his press mm -hmm. on the way to the game. And they asked um, him, oh, do you think it's going to be a, a high-scoring game? You know, you guys have been scoring goals and, and Boston's been scoring a lot of goals and whatever. Do you think that's going to be that type of game tonight, uh, especially mm -hmm. with the rivalry you had in the past and blah, 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 or whatever? He's like, uh, actually, no. If you notice how our team has been playing lately, it's been keeping it close and being conservative and just playing a very good hockey game. And our goal, our team, our games ended, you know, 3 2, 2 1. And he's right. Always by one goal. So they, like know, the always... last, they had, they played the most games where the difference was by one goal in the by NHL. One goal, yes. Like 34 or 34. Five, something like that i think yeah. yeah so he was saying it's going to be a close one it's going to be very tight and watching the game it was exactly that both teams are playing very cautious and it's weird because i mean boston is making the playoffs Montreal is just far from it and you would expect like a free-for-all game but yet it was just very tight that being said um the one thing that stood out for me yesterday's game which i was very surprised in and i was like very shocked is armia he played one of his He's... best games in a really and... long time. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was very surprised to see that from him. Now, maybe it's the ice time he's been getting in, 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 in Laval this year that just he comes out shooting strong. I, I don't know, but yesterday's well, him game. Too, him, too, him too, he's seeing a, a sports psychologist. So, and he, he he's, he's him and Jake Evans are our best penalty killers on the team. Um, I get, yeah. Yesterday we had the, the double minor. Um, mm -hmm. which I was very surprised that they, I didn't know that rule that they can, uh, yeah, they can for high, for high sticking. Yeah. Yeah. So I was very good. surprised, but again, you're at the last seven minutes of the game. You get a double minor. The game is over, especially against a team like Boston with the, the talent that they have. And I was so happy to see that this team fought it mm -hmm. and just sucked that the overtime, like, especially when you're at the game, you know, you're at the game and uh, coming from yeah. a house fan that understands that we want to lose and try to get those the, the jab pick like i went there with my brother-in-law saying oh, i hope you lose today and my brother's like what the fuck are you talking about and i'm like no no you <laughs> to as a house fan you want to lose tonight um and still compete so it was a very good compete competitive game and i just wanted to lose but then you're at the game there's overtime yeah, he, yeah you want to see that back and forth and it was like 15 seconds in and it was over i'm like fuck. so who so whose fault was it i Okay. <laughs> thank God, Joey. Was... Thank God, Joey and Chris are here. We're gonna end. We're gonna end. This is the final topic of the episode. But so I was walking to my car, and there was 320 messages between you guys. <laughs> I didn't have a chance to go read it. So I don't know what your story is, and what Joey's side is, or or I don't know anybody's side. So I'm gonna come neutral here, and not gonna mm -hmm. pick sides because I don't know what. I just ignored that whole yeah. conversation. So yeah. So okay. to me, I'll tell you who I, I think was wrong matheson as yeah. a defenseman in overtime three on three especially in that situation you don't um i think he went deep for nothing and you left your skilled players as defensemen which i don't think like it, they, they, i think matheson the put suzuki and caulfield in the wrong position they're not yeah. defensemen play they're not defensive players they're both offensive players you have Matheson, who's one of our best defensemen, and he it should have been Suzuki or Caulfield going deep, not Matheson. And I think Matheson screwed up there. Okay, so I've been watching. Okay, so just for the audience, we obviously had this major talk in the group chat, like Anthony said. It was go it was back and forth between Joey and Chris, and I came in, gave my two sentences here and there. So Chris is blaming Matheson. Joey is blaming Caulfield. So, who are you? I, I, well, I I told them, and then I actually spoke to Chris about it today, just him and I. And it's it was literally it's literally a chain of events of the right intentions ending badly. Okay, so you look at that highlight and. You you see when when Mike when Matheson is coming on the right side, the, the I, I I forgot who it was I don't know if it was a forward defense but the Boston player that was right in front of him was completely flat footed. 
So Matheson saw an opportunity to outskate him. And Matheson's a good skater. He had an opening and he he had to go for it. And I don't blame him for going for it. Now, it's easy for us to say he should have done this, he should have done that. Hindsight is always 20-20. So I'm going to use a bit of a different vocabulary here. Matheson, he actually beat the forward, right? It looked like he was going to cut to the net, right? But yeah. I think at the very last second, the Bruins player nudged him a little bit where Matheson lost the puck. If you remember, he lost the puck for like a second, not even, retrieved it on his back end and continued to go behind the goalie, right? So looking at that, and that's where... So when you're trying to recover a puck on your backhand and then you're skating, you're making a left turn, you're a right-handed, you're a left-handed shot, you're going to slow down. And that's why the, the Bruins defense was able, able to get him along the boards. Again, hindsight 2020, but an, another option that Matheson probably could have done was when he retrieved the puck after losing it, instead of, instead of making the left turn behind the net, maybe the better option would have been to just stay on your forehand, turn towards the boards on the right, the right boards and either pass it back to Caulfield or Suzuki, or even just get out of the zone, try again, but he didn't do that. So now again, the game sports is all about instincts, right? Being at the right place at the right time. So now Matheson is caught along the boards, right? With the defenseman. What is now it's up to, to, Cole Caulfield's the next forward or the closest player next, right? So Caulfield, you see Caulfield skating, and the puck suddenly becomes loose. And that's where Caulfield tries to go, and he, he's a right-handed shot, right? So he's trying to retrieve it on his backhand. But the Bruins defenseman whacks the puck towards the boards, clears it, retrieved by the, uh, the third Bruins player that's all alone. He's not covered. He retrieves the puck two-on-one. We know how it ends. Now, when we look at Caulfield, what could have he have done? Would it have been better if he stood by the, the other Bruins forward that was waiting for that puck? Yeah, possibly. Or you stay somewhere along the left boards. Because number one rule in hockey, when you clear the puck, you clear the puck by the boards. You never clear the puck up center ice, right? Yeah. So I'm going to see if I can find the video. So, going. so. So again, when Caulfield tried to swipe the loose puck, he ended up skating towards the middle, and then the, and then the the Bruins players broke out. He again, hindsight, maybe it would have been better if he would have stayed along the boards with that other Bruins player that was waiting for that loose puck. So again, it's Matheson saw an opportunity. It was a good opportunity. It just ended badly. Caulfield saw an opportunity to retrieve a loose puck. It was a good opportunity. Ended badly. So to me, that's why I say it's it was just a it it was a chain of events. It was if you ask Matheson, maybe he admit I didn't check the post game uh interviews. Okay, so maybe 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 he would have said he messed up. If you ask Caulfield, maybe Caulfield would think I should have been uh positioned better to retrieve that loose puck. You know what I mean? I just on the overall, I, I'm just annoyed by this Mike Matheson bashing, though, like from a lot of fans, especially on Twitter. Like he's the new whipping boy, and I'm kind of getting fed up of it. Like Mike Matheson, in all honesty, like like yeah, he's not the best quarterback on the power play, but fuck, he's okay. top he, he's top ten amongst defensemen in points on the power play. He's top ten amongst defensemen in goals on the power play. Like he's top ten amongst defensemen. <laughs> points period and he's top five amongst the average amount of ice time played like like it, it's enough with the mike matheson bashing like that's so, all I'm saying about that. okay so being there the, it happened so fast so right the game is fast exactly the game is very fast so when i was there it just happened too fast and from what i saw at the moment it was like why did matheson do that but now when mm -hmm. i'm re-looking at the game you're right. It's a game of instinct. Like, we can't really tell who's at fault because when you're on the ice, things are different. Now, yeah, I am seeing what Joey sees. Like, I don't think in when it's three on three, I don't think Caulfield should have went there because mm -hmm. that gave the opening for the th 
again, it was a three on one originally. Then it became a two on one, but it was really a three yeah. on one because yeah. Caulfield went deep to go help Matheson, which I think Caulfield should have just gave up on that play and just back off and just, like you said before, let's start this play over again. Matheson going into the zone alone with three players. We've seen it so many times in the past when, and we all hate this play, but it, this would have been a perfect example. You know that pass back? Yeah, you know, the drop, the drop, the pass, drop yeah. back, and just start over the play. This was a perfect moment to do that. So, do you want to blame yeah. Madison for not doing it and just taking the risk of going in with three players when Suzuki and Coffee weren't even close to coming and help? He was all by himself. So, I think he should have dropped back. That's the, that's my the, opinion the, on that point. Sure, but the problem is, is that, and I'm looking at it on my phone right here. Is that he didn't he like he actually beat he was he could have had a good shot. It's just he lost control of the puck on his backhand. Now, again, he tries to retrieve it and goes behind the net, but he has his head down. He can't see if if he if he wanted to drop drop it to anybody, he can't see at that angle. And so, do you risk giving the puck away if you don't know where your other two forwards are? I think that's another question that we kind of need to ask like it's they they just did it's it's just the defenseman just sh shut him down perfectly behind the net and into the corner they really did now do you okay yeah do you guys the, do you see my screen is it working uh i think i could i think i could add it to our screen this is pretty there we cool. go let's watch it yeah yeah go for it so so look oh, so look cool. look pause right here pause Okay, so I, I I know he was trying to beat the, the player, mm -hmm. but why? You're alone with three guys. I think he just I think he should have just went back, passed back. Here here's where I think he should have he should have made a turn. Play again. Yeah, nice and easy. So look right there, he loses the puck when he retrieves it. Just a little bit more. Just go a little bit more. Right there, instead of going backwards, uh, uh, taking on the backhand and going behind the net. He should have turned on his forehand into the right, go into the corner, and then he would, would have done that right here. When you got, so look, you so this, the puck right here, right there. Yes, you. T he should have gone to his right, or he maybe a better option would have been going towards the right. Stay on your forehand with your head up, and you'd be able to see where your other two players are. So that, now here, this is where I believe Caulfield made a mistake. But then again. There's two players on Matheson, so maybe Caulfield just seeing that one player alone, he didn't think it was a risky move to go I, there. I, again, I don't blame Caulfield for going because look how close he gets to retreat. Look how loose. Look, look, the puck is loose. It's right there. We see it. Yeah. Look how loose the puck is. But the other defensive swipes it. Now, Caulfield makes he pivots towards the right. Imagine if he would have stayed along the boards or would have pivoted to his left. Maybe he would have he would have maybe nudged the other player and probably wouldn't have been a two on one again. Shoulda woulda coulda. This is all hind in hindsight. Hindsight is always. I I, I actually you think it, you said it right. I think it was just the right the right instinct, just bad, uh, bad finish basically. Bad yeah, finish. It, it it but and that was the chain of events. A right intention, just bad. Uh, just what did, yeah. what did I say? The the the, the right intention was there. It just it just ended badly. That's all. Yeah. So, you, you, like, who's to blame? I mean, it's probably easier to put the blame on Matheson because he started the play. But th th three on three is a whole different, it's a whole different game, and it's so fast. They it's like, so fast, like I said, man. just watching this replay gave me a whole different view of this perspective. But at the game, I saw it so fast. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. You know? so, so. But yeah, so anyways, look, it is, we got it is a what point. It is. I. All, all we have to say is like, man, the month of March, we all thought, forget it, the Canadians are going to lose so many games. They lose one, they lose against one, uh, they lose by one goal, excuse me, against Tampa Bay. They beat the Nashville Predators by one, by one goal, one point. Okay. They got their asses kicked against Carolina. That was to be expected. They only lost by one goal against Toronto Maple Leafs. They beat Columbus 3 0, and they only lost by one goal in overtime. Against against the Bruins, the, the 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 team 
is doing something right here. They're competing against the best teams, and they're not getting blown out of the water. Maybe against Carolina it was just a bad game, but Carolina is one of the best teams in the league. Otherwise, I'm we're, liking. We're, with we're losing with with comp, with with with, comp, with with them competing, and that's what yep. we said at the beginning. What we want to yep. see, and all we want to see is progression from these players uh, individually. It. We want to see progression uh, as a team. Uh, as a like the whole core, building that chemistry and that experience. And we just want to see them compete. We don't want to see a shitty team on the ice losing, like going on the ice and us watching this game. Like what the fuck is happening? Like, I don't mm-hmm. perfect example last year or the year before when we tanked for Slaskowski. So it was the year before, you know, we lost pretty much almost every game. Mm-hmm. It was not a fun season. No, it wasn't. As a fan, like I missed, it was you know, awful to watch 80% it. of the season. And I'm a has fan. I had the, I, I only watched for the podcast, believe it or not. And yeah. I would, I would watch more recaps than the actual game because I did not have fun watching that season. Yeah. And this season, and we said at the beginning, we all we want to do this season, we know we're not going to make the playoffs or maybe get close to it. We're not going to win. I just want to be able to stay home watch the game the whole 60 minutes and actually enjoy watching it yeah and this year i'm sorry even if the fans are uh, disappointed in the, in the standings or whatever but those are fans that just want to win and win the cup and that's all they see it if you're a fan looking at the bigger picture this is a perfect season okay i'm sorry you can shut yeah. on team all you want joey and everybody else <laughs> but <laughs> You know, Starting Joey. <laughs> you can shit all you want, which is fine, you know, but I, I'm not saying we can't say they suck. They don't. They're learning as a young core trying to build that experience and that chemistry. And this is a perfect season to see that. And I think we're going the right direction. That's a perfect way to wrap it up. I think I'm good with that. Perfect. Uh, awesome. So, yeah, so that's a wrap of the Curfew Boys podcast, folks. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is free. Tell your friends about us. Help us grow this page and this love for this team and help us be part of a bigger Montreal Canadiens community. Do not forget, this episode is sponsored by Quick Feet. Q-U-Q-U-U-I-K Feet. That's Q-U-I-K Feet.com. Type in Curfew Boys 10 all caps for your 10% discount on your purchase of the Quick Feet Souls. All our episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. We are on Facebook, Twitter. Even though Facebook is dead, we're still there. Twitter, Instagram. You can be part of the conversation. Join the conversation anytime, anywhere throughout the season. I am Sammy with no longer Mr. Florida Man Anthony. <laughs> yep. Thanks for doing this, bud. We, uh, we will see each other soon. Do not forget, folks. The Canadians are playing against the Calgary Flames on Saturday, March 16th in Calgary at 7 o'clock Eastern so West, Time. Well, so West Coast uh, road West, trip right now. That's that's correct. They have their they start their West Coast trip for the next five games. So that's going to be interesting. Probably going to be late games too, but what well, can you do? 9, 10 o'clock games, yep. Yeah. Exactly that. And thanks a lot for doing this, bud. Have a good night. We'll talk more in the group chat. Cool. Everybody, until next time. Bye now. I doubt. Good night.